Our greatest undoing in Nigeria is the absence of the rule of law. Nigeria is, is a country that professes the rule of law, but operates the opposite of the rule of law. Because in a country where the rule of law holds sway, or where what I call the terrorism of law operates, you can't do what most Nigerians are doing today. You see, like in, in the beginning I said, you see people with petrol in Jericho standing in, in front of filling stations to sell petrol, while indeed at the designated petrol stations, there are no petrol there. And in these security agencies go to buy. That tells you the lawlessness of Nigerian society. That tells you the absence of leadership. That tells you that we are operating like we are in a state of nature where the mighty is right, life is shortest, brutish, and nasty, and there are no place for industry. Young girls like you are also hawking. Young boys are hawking. Most of them are graduates because there are no jobs, and even the available jobs are being sold to the knowledge and understanding and awareness of Nigerian government and nothing is being done. And we talk, we shout, we quarrel, we make noise, and it, it goes through one ear and fly out of the other one. So we, the, the, our government are deaf to public criticism. Our governments all over, across board, have no milk on human kindness and human feelings for the suffering of the downtrodden. And so, m most youth, most Nigerians take to crime as a means of survival. Because if, for instance, um, those who are standing on the street with petroleum products uh, have gainful employment in, an, in, in a well hygienic environment, when their interests are well catered for, I, the possibility exists that they will not do so. If you travel to advanced countries like UK, US, you won't see anybody selling petroleum products on the streets, no matter the level of scarcity. So, why? Why should there be scarcity of petroleum products in Nigeria? Have you asked? They, they, we don't have functional refineries in Nigeria. And the government that promises that they were going to, ref, to build refineries have not done so. The petroleum products we produce in Nigeria are taken outside of Nigeria for purposes of um, uh, refine and bring back to Nigeria. And yet, we are the producers of these petroleum products. So when I see this, the irony of it, how terrible it is, then one begins to wonder what is the function and the basic duties of government to us. For me, I see none. Because... Even the security agencies that you are talking about are also not secured in the hands of insecurity. They have substandard material, substandard equipment. The kind of thing that happened in Nigeria, the head are not rolling, cannot happen in a well-organized, well-civilized society without head rolling. Have you ever seen a public officer in Nigeria resigning for the relation of duty, they would justify wrong conduct under the auspices, under the auspices of the what the so-called right to fair hearing. So speaking for myself, therefore, the absurdities that we are seeing is a function of a lawless society where everybody is law unto himself. If you had as you are as we are coming, you would have seen that ordinary traffic rules are being obeyed in breach. You are going on the road. People are coming with full speed, facing you, and wanting you to give them ways. They don't obey traffic rules. So, like I said somewhere, it appears to me that lawlessness has become part and parcel of virtually everyone in Nigeria. So, in all of these circumstances, therefore, when you see people carrying petroleum products and jerry can on the road selling within the uh, uh, 
vicinity and if, even in front of the offices of law enforcement agents, you begin to wonder whether the, we have law enforcement agents in Nigeria. So whatever made Chidima or whatever name you call, I, I don't know her name, but I was told that she's a legal socialite uh, that uh, filled PMS, petroleum motor spirit or something, in a jerry can with um, um, either her name or whatever on it as a souvenir for party. Um, what we need to look at is whether that act is an act of generosity or an act of criminality. There are laws that prohibit uh, anybody from carrying petrol other than a designated place. And you know that petroleum products are combustible material. They are very hazardous to human life. And so whatever may have been her motive, uh, I think it was not within uh, the exercise of a fundamental right for her to carry that souvenir of combustible material and distribute it outside of the filling station. And I think that he does not need to make it a souvenir if she had intended to help whoever she intended to help to have uh, done what in, she needed to do without uh, showing off, if I may use the, that word. Because this country, with respect, seems to be a country of absurdity, where people get away with all manner of abnormalities because there are no consequences for our misbehavior. For instance, you see that there are no fuel in filling station, yet you see people with jerry can selling fuel on the road, even within the nose of our security agencies, and nothing happened. So whatever informed her decision, for me, I saw it as an act of irresponsibility to do so, because it didn't speak well of whoever she was. If she's a socialite, there are better way of uh, being a socialite than that way of bringing petroleum to show. And if it's an act of mockery, well, I do not know uh, what gain you have to mock your, your country that has been unable to provide the basic amenities for its citizens. I agree that the um, government of Nigeria seems to have uh, lost or ran out of idea of governance. And you know that so many things are happening. We are virtually government of ourselves. Today, I provide electricity for myself by virtue of the fact that I have to buy a generator. I provide water for myself because I have to dig borehole. I have to also, uh, even the so-called uh, discos don't give us light. So virtually, even the road to your house, you may have to uh, spare money to tie it. So, not to talk about schools that are non-existence. Most of our universities today are existing in name. Now we have uh, ASU that is on yearly annual ritual of uh, strike. And this strike has crippled the educational sectors of this country. Hospital, to use the word of uh, General Mohammed Buhari, the then military head of state, is a mere consulting clinic. It's the same thing since 1983 or 84 when military seized power. So everything, markets are getting burnt every day, including those who are looking for where to uh, make end meet under the bridge. And you know, to talk about insecurity, uh, somebody was making a, a joke that uh, in Nigeria, the air is not free to travel, the road is not free for, to travel, and again, the, the railway, uh, just of uh, how many days ago, that the railway had been uh, bombed, and some persons who were on their legitimate assignment have had life snuffed off of them. 
So when you look at all of those things, within the context of uh, whether the legal socialite was just trying to make a mockery, one may be tempted to agree with her that maybe he just to send a message, but it was wrongly sent. She didn't need to have uh, fueled the petrol in the jerry can and then send it to bring it for the party. What if an, anybody was there that was a, a great smoker or some uh, inflammable materials are there and it caught fire? What will you say? So within that context, therefore, I think that the trial and conviction was rightly deserved.